Most people with even a casual interest in geography have probably noticed that eastern North America has winters far colder than Europe or North Africa at the same latitude. It's a drastic difference. Take, for instance, the Albemarle Sound in North Carolina, seen here with a fresh layer of ice on January 7, 2018. Just across the Atlantic is the southern tip of Spain, on the Strait of Gibraltar. Although both of these places are at 36 degrees north, their winter temperatures are very different. Compare New York City to Aveiro, Portugal, or Paris with Quebec, and you'll see a similar trend. This isn't news to your average geography nerd. What fewer people realize, however, is that East Asia provides an even more stark contrast. The port of Vladivostok in the Russian Far East is at the same latitude as A Coruña in Spain, but the average January low in this Siberian port is more than 20 degrees Celsius colder than that of A Coruña. A January night in Beijing is colder than one in Helsinki, Finland, but Beijing is at about the same latitude as Valencia, Spain. The coast of southern China is south of the Tropic of Cancer, faces a warm sea, but gets too cold in winter to be called tropical under the Köppen climate classification. But when we hop across the Pacific to the American west coast, the mild winters return. While it barely gets a above freezing on a January day in Seoul, South Korea, San Francisco has only had five years in the last hundred with a light frost. You get the idea. So why do winters get colder on the eastern side of a continent? Many people will answer this with a simple, hey, warm currents. But in reality, there are four converging factors at play. The first is the most obvious. Earth is covered by air masses, which are constantly in motion. In the mid-latitudes, winds tend to be westerly, meaning from the west, so Western Europe and Western North America tend to receive air from the ocean. And seasonal temperature variation over the ocean is very limited due to the heat capacity of water and vertical convection. The water warms the air above it in winter and creates mild winters on the western sides of land masses but this factor alone isn't enough. In the southern hemisphere, there's a much smaller difference between the east and west, even on a wide continent like Australia. The missing ingredient here is a large landmass closer to the poles. In Canada and Siberia every winter, we see the development of continental polar air masses, which are far colder than those over the northern oceans. These air masses tend to swing south on the eastern side of the continent throughout the winter. But why is this? Why do they tend to swing south in the east? There are two causes. First, oddly enough, is the warmth of the North Atlantic and North Pacific. In winter, low pressure systems develop over the northern ocean basins thanks to their relative warmth. These lows are an almost permanent winter feature, and they guide cold air southward on their western side, the eastern coastlines. The Icelandic low in the Atlantic and the Aleutian low in the Pacific both have this effect in winter. In addition, mountain ranges encourage the cold air to swing south on their eastern side. So the Rockies, the Tibetan Plateau, and the Altai Mountains encourage frigid air to dip southward to their east. Because of this wind pattern, Manchuria and eastern Russia tend to get colder than the Central Asian steppe at the same latitude, despite being so much closer to an ocean. The record lows aren't colder in the east, however, because prevailing winds are not 24-7 winds. Arctic air can and will swing into Central Asia quite suddenly. Finally, it is not a myth that warm currents are an important factor. Modeling has demonstrated that without the Gulf Stream and North Atlantic drift, Northern Europe would only keep its mild temperatures into December. I elaborated on this in my fifth video, Why is the Arctic Asymmetric? The equivalent in the North Pacific is the Kuroshio Current and the North Pacific Drift, though it's weaker and doesn't reach as far north. Across the ocean from Ireland or British Columbia, we find some very different ocean currents. When continents extend close enough to the poles, a cold current will form on the east coast, which brings iceberg-laden water into warmer latitudes. The Labrador, Oyashio, and Falkland currents 
are all examples of this. These currents definitely cool the summer along the east coast, and they delay the spring, but do they really make winters colder? Maybe not. Sable Island is 100 miles or about 160 kilometers offshore from Nova Scotia and is wrapped in the icy embrace of the Labrador Current. But these waters still serve as a buffer against the worst temperatures of the mainland. The water still adds heat to frigid air masses from Canada. A better generalization might be that these waters don't moderate winters as much as they might without the cold current. So, to conclude, winters on northern hemisphere land masses are so different in the east and the west for four reasons. The difference in heat capacity between land and sea and the prevailing westerlies, wind direction modified by low pressure over the ocean, wind direction modified by terrain, and warm currents. As always, the sources for this video are in the description. Thanks for watching. If you find these topics interesting, consider subscribing. There will be many more to come.